اللهم الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استقاموا بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي And this is a quick reflection from the Jesus Messiah from Surah Ar-Rahman, which is one of the beautiful stories of the Quran, in which Allah Almighty counted many blessings that He has given to us in this world by teaching us the Quran, creating us, creating a balance on the face of this earth. He balanced out the day with the night, the sun with the moon, heat with cold. If it is too cold, we turn on the the heat, if it is too, you know, hot eternally, it sees. This is all from the bounties of Allah the Almighty on us in this world. And in the hereafter, He created for those who truly believe and do righteous deeds and everlasting bounty, which is Jannah, to the end. And after mentioning a bounty, He the Most High would ask this question, Which of the favors of your Lord can you make kind? And kind deny, and of course the answer is there is nothing from his favor that we can we can deny. Our Lord Scala Imam Al-Qurtani mentioned in his tafsir that when this surah was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he recited it to the jinn, the company of jinn, and denied that this surah was revealed. And in the morning he recited the surah to his companions from the beginning to the end, and he did not hear any response from them. So he said to the companions, لَقَدْ تَرَقْتُ هَذِهِ السُّورَةِ الْبَارِحَ لِلْجِنْ فَكَانُوا أَسْلَنَ رَدًّا مِنْكُمْ He said, I recited this surah to a company of jinn last night and they have a better response than you. The Prophet said, كُلَّمَا تَرَقْتُ الْآيَةِ فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ قَالَ تُلْجِنْ يَا رَبْ مَا بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ آلَائِكَ نُكَذِّبَ فَلَكَ الْحَمْدُ وَالشُّكُرُ The jinn will say, O oh, our Lord, there is nothing from your bounty that we mankind and jinn can deny. I mean, we jinn can deny, therefore to you belong all praise and, and thanks. So it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when you hear this surah being recited, if you hear the verse, فَبِأَيِّ آلَائِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Which of the famous of your Lord can you name and jinn deny? We should say, O oh, our Lord, there is nothing from your favor that we can deny, therefore to you belong all praise and thanks. And Allah Almighty began this surah with his name Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahman is from the derivative of the word Ar-Rahman which means mercy and mercy requires someone to receive it and the receiver of mercy is of course someone who is in need someone who is dependent, someone who is not self-sufficient and the giver of mercy is indeed independent, the able, the self-sufficient on the Muskala, Imam Ibn Uthaymin said a complete mercy is to have, to show the willingness to help the one who is in need and to have the ability to help them to meet his worth, need. There are some people who may sympathize with someone who is in need, but they will not be able to uh, to help, right? So there are some people who may help, but not with sympathy. There are some people they help you is because they want something in, in return. This is not showing complete mercy. And Allah the Almighty is the one who gave us even though he doesn't need anything back, back from us. So he is the most merciful. And Oskalis mentioned that mercy is divided into two, the general mercy and the special mercy. The general mercy includes everyone, the believers and the, and the non-believers. Fir'aun and Haman, everybody benefited from this general mercy. Everyone get to breathe from the earth of Allah the Almighty, drink from the water of Allah. The disbelievers enjoy the bounty of what? saying but the special mercy is for those who Allah the Almighty love and that is to be guided to Islam to be guided to the Quran and this is one of the greatest mercy of Allah the Almighty on us this is the reason why when he the Most High began the surah with Ar-Rahman what comes next? An-Namal Quran Al-Nubuskar Imam Ibn Tayyib said he the Messiah said, Al-Namal Qur'an, after saying Ar-Rahman to indicate that the teaching of the Qur'an is one of the greatest words, favor and mercy of Allah the Almighty on us. Oskalis also mentioned that mercy is divided into absolute mercy and relative mercy. Absolute mercy is the mercy that whoever does not have it is deficient. If you don't have an eye, you're absolutely what? Deficient. 
You don't have the sense of hearing, you are absolutely what? Deficient. But some mercy are relative. There may be mercy to some, but to some it can be a punishment or a torture to the end. Example of this is even children in general. All right? Having children is a relative mercy. Because some people, their children become a curse on them because they created their, their misery. And if you look at the story of Khedr and Musa, when Khedr killed the boy, Musa said to Khedr, Akatalka nafsan e, zakiyatan yadayri nafs, lakajik tashayan e, nukro. Are you killing an innocent soul who did not do anything? You have indeed committed a major sin. And Khedr explained to Musa afterwards that this boy, his parents are pious children, I mean, pay people. But this boy is going to grow up and destroy his, his parents. So Allah the Almighty wants to replace for him someone who is, who is better. And another example is marriage. You know, if some people marriage brings happiness to them, some people marriage create their, their misery. So this thing is not an absolute mercy, it's a relative mercy. And the wisdom behind this is to make us depend on Allah the Almighty all the time in making what? Dua and asking Allah. Because what you think is good for you may not be good for you. That's why he the Messiah said, Wasa and Takarahu Shay and Mahua Khaiwan Lakum. Wasa and Tahib Bush and Mahua Shabun Lakum. Perhaps you dislike something but it is good for you. Perhaps you love something but it is bad for you and Allah knows while you know not. There are many people who live in depression because they're not blessed to be married. It shouldn't be like that. You have to be pleased with whatever situation you find yourself in as long as your relationship with Allah the Almighty is what? Is good. Some people are in depression because they're not blessed with a child. You never know what this child will bring to you in your, in your life. So be grateful to Allah the Almighty as long as your relationship with Allah the Almighty is, is good and do not do not care. The most beloved individual to Allah under the surface of this guy is who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu But the Prophet tasted the bitterness of orphanage. He lost his father before he was what? born. He lost his mother after reaching the age of, of six. All of his children passed away during his lifetime. I mean, could you withstand this? All of his children, the last one, which is Ibrahim, died on his lap. And Fatima, immediately after his death, she also what? Followed him. And he is the most beloved individual under the surface of the, of the sky. If someone is tasted with this, they would have said, what did I do to you all? Oh, oh Allah. So just make sure that your connection and your relationship with Allah the Almighty is, is great. And again, like I said, the wisdom behind it is to keep us connected with our Lord. This is the reason why the Prophet Wasallam taught us to say that Dua'ul A is the heart, right? Before you get married, you make ask Allah the Almighty. Before you do something, you ask because something that you think is good for you may not be, may not be good for you. And if you are tested as a believer, still say what? Alhamdulillah ala Because some people may also be depressed because they got married and they do all that they can, it did not work. Break. It is a test that Allah the Almighty is testing your way. So we ask Allah the Almighty to grant us understanding of this being Amen. He the most high is the most merciful and he wants us to be merciful, right? That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, Yarhamu man fil aw, yarhamu kum man fi, man fi sama. Be merciful towards those who are on the face of the earth and the one who is above the heaven will also be merciful to you. What is our portion of mercy? We have to be merciful to those negligent servants of Allah the Almighty by doing our best to admonish them with wisdom and in a lenient manner so that they will repent back to Allah. We have to be merciful to the sinful servants of Allah the Almighty and not look at them with contempt. Because some people, when they see somebody falling short, they belittle those people. I mean, there are some people who are struggling. You have to be sympathetic towards them. I mean, if you see somebody with no leg, you will sympathize for him, right? But seeing somebody falling short is something that we should be more concerned about because this is going to drag him to an everlasting punishment. So as a daddy, you have to have that merciful, merciful heart. This is who the Prophet was. 
lil alameen he is very merciful sympathetic to the point that even during war when the companions are trying to overcome the tribe of the thief, they're not able to. The companions say, Oh, Prophet, oh, don't allow him. So, oh, Mr. Father, make dua against them. The Prophet raises hands and says, Allahumma ihdi the thief and what to be him gay? Muslimin. So, oh, Allah, guide the tribe of the thief and bring them as Muslims. And guess what? They were guided and they came as Muslims. So, we have to have that mercy in our heart. And also, we have to be merciful to those hungry people who are who don't have enough and help them with our wealth those who are weak support them with our with our strength to, to the end so we ask Allah Almighty to grant us understanding of this deen and in Jazakumullah khairan wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh